Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. I'm Billy Thorpe. I am your host tonight. Uh, actually, your only host, Judson Brock, uh, had some, the co host of Eastern Current, had some family things come up he needed to take care of. Um, so just, um, yeah, he'll be back next week with us to talk about fishing. And so I'm kind of riding solo. Uh, all the tech stuff, all the fishing stuff, uh, for the people who know me, uh, know that I, I like fishing. I love, I love being on the water when I can. But I'm not the most techy fishing guy, so this will be a really interesting episode. And so thank you for joining us. We have Travis Overman here of Wilmington, North Carolina, fish uh, resident for his whole life, uh, been fishing here. So a lot of good information. We're going to be talking mostly about bait fishing for inshore, uh, but just talking about some of his strategies and some of the things that he brings to the table as a local guide. Um, so yeah, super excited to have him on the show. I'll introduce him just a little bit. He's Skyping in, so he's on standby. Uh, but before we get started, just want to ask you guys to share this broadcast. Uh, you know, Jutz and I work really hard on, on every one of these episodes, and we appreciate you. And a part of the reason why we went ahead with the episode tonight, even amongst other situations going on, is because we wanted to uh, just continue to bring consistent content. And so I said, okay, hey, I'm here. I can I can run this show maybe pretty good by myself tonight one night only so if Judson you're watching this we definitely excited I'm excited to have you back next week uh, for sure uh, so anyway so if you just share our broadcast you'll have an opportunity to win this picture right here and this amazing redfish painting by Judy Brock arguably the biggest fan of the show uh, so I will lay that there so I will give that away at the end of the show um, and just to be entered to win like this page comment uh, help me out with questions as we get into the questions later on the interview uh, be sure to tell us where you're watching from uh, we have a lot of people watching from like different areas like Texas and Florida and Georgia so uh, yeah we didn't even you know didn't even expect to expand out that far but really excited uh, that we have an audience from there. Also, we're going to be giving this away tonight from AFCO. We're going to be giving away the Catch of the Week prize here in just a little bit. So to, in order to win that prize, we entered to win that prize throughout the week, just uh, submit your pictures to us. Facebook, Instagram, or etcurrent at gmail.com is a great way to submit those pictures to be entered to win that. Man, I am doing a lot of talking. I cannot wait to bring on the guest here in just a few minutes so Travis can help me talk a little bit. Shoo, I gotta take a breath. All right, so one more reminder, go to our website. It's etcurrent.com. Uh, also, go check out our podcast. Man, just blowing up. We've had a lot of downloads on our podcast this week. Uh, anywhere you can find a podcast, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, Google Play, uh, Podbean, I don't know, wherever you can find it. The top five on Google is what I Googled and posted it, so be sure to check that out. Um, I see Judson is watching here, and Cliff is watching. Cliff, man, Cliff might be uh, coming, might be chasing Judy down for the biggest fan of the show. Um, oh, no, I don't have a laugh. There's no one in the studio to laugh with me. I'm all by myself. Uh, actually, at my friend's co-working space here on Oleander Drive, uh, Jacob Tippett was very kind and said, hey, you can use my co-working space. I'll clear it out for you. Tell everybody not to, I don't know if he told everybody not to come, but... Uh, set us up here so really nice spot uh, if you guys need a co-working space do a little plug for him all right let's get into the sponsors of the show i mentioned afco marshware uh, earlier uh, eastern angling judd judson brock you can go check out his youtube channel at judd brock fishing uh, thorpe creative is my business we print t-shirts make hats do all that fun stuff so if you have a business or hey you have a a great t-shirt idea be sure to get in touch with me i can help you out with that i strike fishing has been uh key uh, to the to the show since day one uh, if you didn't catch that episode uh, with high strike fishing make sure you go back and watch that just a phenomenal episode so we want to thank all those guys and then Cito, let's here we go for our Cito tip of the week I didn't get a response back. I think I, I text um, I text Scott. He was driving, so he told me one time when we started this that you can save twenty five dollars on your next Cito package by mentioning Eastern Current. So that's the tip of the week uh, is to mention to mention that you saw uh, Cito on this show. Save twenty five bucks. I think that's for you know new or renewal of your account. So yeah, man, I am just talking way too much. I can't. We're almost there though. We got one more thing to do, and then we're gonna get into this interview. Um, so I hope you guys are doing well. Once again, in order to be entered to win this right here. Oh, hold on a second. I'm trying to do too many things at one time. Enter to win this redfish 
painting by Judy Brock, um, you have to comment, like, share, do all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give that away at the end of the show. But right now, I'm going to give away Catch of the Week, and it goes to, drum roll, Damian Melendez. Look at that thing. Just a nice, I just a nice, big, fatty red drum. Uh, I like how he's holding it, too. That's giving it like a little little side hug there. So, Damien, appreciate you submitting your picture for Catch of the Week. You are a winner. So if you're watching this, be sure to tune in or be sure to send us your information. We can send that out to you. All right. So let me just look down my list here, make sure I got everything. Usually Judson and I are spitballing back and forth. Um, so, and we're going to ask when I bring Travis on here in just a second, we're going to ask him about the fishing report since Judson uh, is not here to share that with us. So anyways, I guess I'm going to go ahead and introduce Travis. Um, so to give you a little bit of backstory, he has been a fishing guide in the area for about six years. He was born and raised, uh, in the Wilmington, North Carolina area, been fishing here all his life. Uh, once again, we're going to be diving into inshore fishing strategies, uh, primarily bait fishing. Um, and so, yeah, he is mostly guides of the lower Cape Fear river, uh, knows it just about as good as anybody. And this is my first time meeting Travis. Uh, man, I am telling you what, I do not, I cannot switch, host, and read all this stuff at the same time. So anyway, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to bring Travis on. Travis, how are you doing, man? Can you hear me good? Hey, Billy, how are you? I can hear you great. Man, I'm doing good. Please bear with me. I'm like all over the place. I'm, I got catch of the week up. I'm talking about your business. I'm talking about you being, uh, you know, a uh, just a veteran of and a native of this area, which first of all is pretty rare. I feel like when I meet someone from Wilmington, I literally feel like I've scraped a piece of gold somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not many people, you know, say they can, uh, you know, born and raised here and, and uh, have stayed. But yeah, there's a few of us around. Yeah, man. Well, once again, appreciate you being on the show. Uh, you know, such different circumstances. Uh, so hopefully you and I can make a go of it and, and really provide some good quality information uh, as far as, you know, tactics and strategies of what, what you're doing here uh, on the Cape Fear and, and even inshore, nearshore, offshore. Uh, sounds like you do a little bit of both of those. So I'll go ahead and get, I'll go ahead and get started um, and just really ask you kind of what is the fishing report? Judson usually shares this, but he's not with us tonight, obviously. Uh, so man, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, and it doesn't have to be detailed inshore, offshore, all that, but just what's going on. What, do, what have you been catching with your clients? Can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so we just had a full moon last night and I don't know that it's affected the fishing too much, but uh, we definitely had a slower trip starting this morning than we did yesterday. Um, but yeah, we're catching red drum, flounder, and sea trout. Um, more drum and flounder than sea trout right now. Um, but the, the folks who are uh, fishing, you know, live shrimp under corks are, are doing pretty well on the uh, on the top of the rising tide in uh, the lower Cape Fear area. But uh, I've primarily been targeting uh, redfish and flounder. Okay, yeah, and I actually saw, I guess it was on your Instagram page, which, by the way, um, I, I don't have it on this screen, but you guys can follow him on Instagram, and he posts fish, fishing pictures and all kinds of stuff. And I actually saw you guys, like, hooked up on a mess of flounder. Your most, I think it was your most recent picture. Was that, for, like, from today or the last few days, I guess? Yeah, so that was actually from yesterday, and, uh, <clears throat> you know. Okay, so you're, so you're one of those guys. You're putting old pictures up. I see how it is, man. Yeah, uh, so that was that Monday morning. Uh, you know, I, I try to I try to post uh, – as much as I can, but you know, it's, it's so difficult. We're fishing, you know, two trips a day, uh, taking several photos, uh, with several clients. So it's, it's hard to get everyone on, uh, on our social media page, uh, and all of the fish photos. So typically we try to upload those to our uh, website directly. Okay. Now I'm kind of a business nerd. So, uh, have you seen a big increase since you had your social media platform as far as like posting pictures? Have you seen a lot more people, you know, cause Instagram hasn't been around forever, but you've been guiding for a while. Is that been like a game changer for your business as far as booking more opportunities or more guiding trips? Um, honestly it hasn't, I really haven't, um, blasted our charter business on our social or on my personal uh, social media page. Uh, word of mouth, honestly, is, has been the, uh, a big help, but working for someone who has the most that that much experience in their area uh has helped me a lot plus you know with this being my six-year guiding 
uh, so many repeat clients. It's uh, it's unbelievable, you know. So. Okay. Yeah, man, that sounds that sounds good. I was just kind of curious about that. Always always curious about that. So, man, let's let's go ahead and get into this. We always like to ask guests when they come on, especially for me, because you know, you and I literally just met and talked for the first time about 20 30 minutes ago so let's yeah. let's tell me a little bit about your history i know you grew up here um i mean how did you get in the fishing like how did you get the fishing bug so to speak well i had a uh, major influence from my father um you know typical uh you know one two-year-old going out you know farm fishing uh bass ponds um you know, I was I was watching the show a few weeks back and, and you know, hearing Ben's story and Judson's story, uh, kind of, you know, I, th- I feel like most of our stories are all relatable. But, um, you know, as a kid growing up fishing, you know, two, three years old uh, for largemouth bass, brim, crappie, um, getting the bug early and then, you know, getting help from, you know, adults and you know, getting you out there on the water, I, I got the saltwater bug probably when I was 12. Um, and I want to say it was whenever I caught my first legal uh, upper slot red drum. So uh, caught several fish with my father, you know, what we, what we would call puppy drum, but uh, growing up. And just it's uh, something I, I just can't get out of my system. You know, I... I I thought that, you know, guiding would, uh, would keep me away from the water on my days off or whenever I get a chance to, uh, to kind of take a break, but I, I just can't. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that is interesting. A lot of, a lot of people start out bass fishing in, you know, like you said, in farm ponds or whatnot. Um, and I'm from like the mountains of Tennessee. So actually I started out on like a, on a trout stream, um, yeah. catching brown trout, and rainbow trout. So a little bit different, but it does seem like here a lot of people start in that freshwater uh, neck of the woods. So, so talking about fish, what is like your favorite fish? Now the questions so Judson puts several of these questions together and he kind of put three down there, flounder trout or redfish. Uh, I'm kind of curious overall, what is your, your, your favorite fish? I mean, you can tell us an inshore fish, but is there a favorite fish to target um, that of, of Travis Overman? Uh, it, would have to be red drum honestly okay uh it's my favorite fish to cat uh fight um and and to understand uh because i mean most people you know they think drum fishing is easy and, and it can be uh, but at the same time they can be pretty stubborn and and getting the fish to eat uh can be the hardest hardest thing to do but um red drum hands down uh, my favorite fish to catch Okay, man, that's great. And what is your favorite way to catch the redfish? Is it is it fly? Is it, you know, soaking bait? Is it artificials? Like, I mean, if you just if you said you can only fish for red drum one way for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, probably throw in a plug. Okay, uh, all right. And Justin would probably second that, but or you know, a fly. But you know, not too many uh, folks can do that on the uh, charter boat, but. Um, throwing a plug, honestly, in certain certain times of the year, spring and, and fall and summer early, obviously. Okay, gotcha, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's always. That was actually um, my first time I w- went red drum fishing. Uh, I was on. Uh, I, I, I actually I was on Luke Tippett's boat, but it was his uncle that that took me. And actually, I've only. I, I'll just go ahead and say this. I, I probably shouldn't admit it to anybody, especially on the show. But I've only caught two red drum in my entire life. And one okay. was on top water, and then one was soaking bait down in North Myrtle Beach. And so I caught a, you know, red drum in the slot, like 21 inches or something like that. And then yep. I caught a 48 inch. So I was a little nice. spoiled, both on a charter boat, which thankful for you guys, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to do all the pre work so I can just come in and catch fish and brag about it for the rest of my life. Those two red drums. Right. Uh, and then, you know, been red drum fishing several other times, but like you're saying, these guys can be a little stubborn to, to get to eat mm-hmm. in some conditions. Um, so, so yeah, man. So, okay. So let's talk about you've, so you've fished here your whole life. You've been, you know, been a guy for the last six years or so you've been yep. on the water a lot. You're talking two day trips. What is like the most memorable day that you've had on the water so far in the, in the Cape Fear area? Uh, it's, it's, you know, 
in my life or in yeah let's go let's go anything. macro man let's go life in your lifetime in the, in the cape fear area the, what's the last week the last week okay no no i'm saying you know in in this past week or uh or in my lifetime oh no 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 i'm sorry let's go lifetime let's go macro okay uh well prior to uh last uh late summer um a buddy of mine who's he's probably on the show or, or watching, uh, tuning in, uh, Scott Blevins, shout out to him. Uh, we had a pretty epic day of flounder fishing, um, lower Cape Fear and uh, in near shore. Uh, I think we boated 78 flounder and I think, you know, had half of those, I want to say legal keepers, um, all within three and a half, four hours of fishing. My goodness, man. I, probably some people watching the show haven't caught 70 some flounder in their entire life of fishing. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> it, it was pretty epic. Uh, but like I said, prior to that, like, you know, probably sitting on the waterfront at Southport um, with my dad and a 16 foot woman in a boat. Uh, when this was when I was in high school, probably a freshman or sophomore, uh, I think we had 22 keeper flounder. Wow. Wow, yeah. man, that's impressive. And what were you guys catching those on, on, on both of those trips? What, what, do you, what wow. were you throwing? Both trips, finger mullet. Okay, so finger mullet. Yeah, man, I know a lot of guys that, especially in those tournaments, that will just bring in, you know, just doormats um, on finger mullet. So, I, you know, a lot of people are going artificial, and, and so there's an argument to be had for, you know, live bait or, or cut bait or whatever. I mean, I've seen some big fish uh, being brought in that way. Yeah, Scott Blevins, he just made a comment on our, on our uh, comments here. He says, my man, epic day. So just struck a memory with him. <laughs> Yeah, man, we uh, we talk about that from time to time, but I don't know that we will see a, another trip like that. Maybe in the years to come because of our uh, up, upcoming planter closure. So yeah, yeah. So I know Judson had mentioned that you wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, I've kind of prefaced it as I always do that. Um, you know, I always don't like to. So well, I'll let you share your thoughts. But just if you guys are listening or watching. Um, you know, Juts and I would try to stay pretty neutral and don't try to get too political. I mean, he and I both have been doing a lot more research on the topic. Uh, it definitely affects your guys' industry and your guys' income, you know, much more than mine. And then also commercial fishermen. And maybe, you know, I, I mentioned this idea to, to, a couple, to Judson and then to a couple other guys in the industry of having you trying to find two friendly guys that wouldn't punch each other in the face and talk about recreational fishing and commercial because, you know, somebody like me who just moved here or fairly new to saltwater fishing, you know, we're like in the middle, like, okay, pros and cons, but guys like you, you know, you've been on the water for so long. You've seen yeah. the impacts on both sides on the rec, on the rec side. You've seen an influx of an increase of, of recreational guys, you know, getting fishing license and going out and doing whatever. And then you've seen the commercial side. So man, please feel free if you want to over the next couple you know, minutes here to share, you know, share your thoughts. I mean, if you have, and I always like to present this way, like if you have an issue, please bring a solution because just pointing no fingers doubt. doesn't really do anything. Cool. Is it, that fair? Absolutely. It does not. Um, can't just point fingers, but uh, you know, I, I'm all for the uh, planter closure and I don't know if it, you know, hurricane related or not, but I I have seen a, a not a shortage of planter this year, but uh, as far as our numbers, you know, we keep logs and uh, photo albums uh, year after year, and I haven't caught as many keeper flounder inshore uh, this year uh, compared to last year and in the year prior. But you know, it could be related to the hurricane, um, you know, because we got hit pretty good, but. Uh, we haven't been able to get out in the ocean much and target um, flounder on the nearshore reefs and, and wrecks uh, on our uh, beaches because of the, the weather re recently. So uh, typically like July and August, we're going out uh, if, you know, the river heats up and uh, the water's too hot, but targeting flounder uh, there and then we can kind of get an idea of, you know, how many fish are being caught uh, and communicating, you know, from guide to guide and, and then talking to the red guys who are uh, taking the day off to go fish. But um, I, I don't know uh, how it's going to impact us, honestly. Um, but like I said, I, I am all for it. If it's, if it's for the better, then I'm all for it. And, you know, I have, I have friends who are commercial fishermen 
tons of friends who are recreational fishermen and uh you know they hate to see it close but uh it's up to the state and i guess i'm not big into politics but um you know like i said if it's if it's for the better then uh then so be it but you know we'll have to target other species yeah man that's that's fair and you know i'm always about taking care of the resource i mean we have a a, a little boy who is turning one this week and so yesterday his grandparents so my mom and dad uh bought him his lifetime sportsman's fishing inland off you know near like coastal fishing license and so you know as i was buying that i was like man this is a pretty sobering moment to think like man he, he's gonna have to wait several years to use that but hopefully when he's my age he can still enjoy that on the coast of north carolina uh, so i definitely agree with you i think it's you know it's our job uh, as people to to take care of the resource and so yeah man i appreciate you sharing that in a way that's you know you're like hey i'm, I'm about the resource i'm not about taking this guy's money or taking this guy's job but or you know I like that. I like that style of, hey, let's take care of the fish. So one last question, a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get right into, you know, the kind of meat of the show as far as fishing. Uh, so you've been guiding for a while. So you said about six years. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, full time, probably five years, five, six years. Um, okay. You know, I, I, toyed, I toyed with the idea uh, and, and the guy I work with, uh, Wally, um, he, he pushed me and pushed me. And then you know, I kind of decided, hey, you know, something I would like to have, you know, as far as my captain's license, um, it would, you know, be silly for me not to do that because I've been around the water and my whole life and been on the water. Um, so it'd be a good credential, you know, but, yeah. uh, and as far you... as guiding, as far as guiding it, it kind of just fell into my lap in, in the, in the, in the situation that I was in, uh, working at a marina and, you know, wanting to be on the water versus working near the water. Um, so I kind of, like I said, toyed with it for a year, year and a half. And then I've been fishing full-time guiding for about five years. Okay. And, and do you feel like this will be a lifetime thing for you or do you feel like it's seasonal or, I mean, uh, it's, it's you, definitely seasonal. Um, although, you know, in, in our area, we can, we can fish year round, uh, depending true. on yeah. what the weather's doing. But, um, no, it, it definitely is seasonal in, in our busy season, you know, anyone, uh, can, uh, can relate to this but like may 1 october 1 is our busy season really july june july august three months out of the year you're fishing 90 to 120 days um that's when the folks are here on vacation and that's when the calls come in so okay gotcha man you, know, you, have, you have a lot of folks who will travel in through you know for the day uh within three or four hours from the beach that are you know dedicated hardcore fishermen uh, who understand now, like fall fishing is typically the best time of year to fish here. Um, so they will come in for the day, but you know, 90, 90 to 120 days is we go, uh, we try to fish two days, two trips a day, seven days a week. Okay. Awesome, man. So, so let's go ahead and get into this a little bit. So, you know, our first question is always when you're talking about fishing, it's like, uh, and you can talk about before trip or, or during trip or whatever, but like, how are, how are you deciding like, Hey, where am I going to hunt for inshore fish? And you can, you know, primarily flounder, trout, red drum, um, or redfish, rather. So what does that, you know, what does that process look like for you? I know we talked a little bit about using Google Maps. You said, hey, that's not really my thing. So can you dive in a little bit quickly of how you choose your spot to go fishing? Um, it's funny because, you know, growing up, I fished all over it, you know, lower Cape Fear area, uh, being born and raised in Southport, and then, you know, back and forth, Wilmington uh and oak island but um you know seeing i see you know the marshes forever changing and um you know spots that were good 15 20 years ago whenever we were out uh are not great anymore uh and then you know new areas uh close to spots that have produced are starting to produce but um you know typically you know, chasing redfish, um, I like fishing lower, lower tides for them. Uh, it's easier to target when they're not in the grass or on, in the edges of the grass. Uh, and then they're also chasing bait fish. So, um, falling tide, the last three hours of the falling tide is, is my favorite time, uh, to typically target redfish in the creeks, um, and then the feeder creeks. 
around the uh, Bald Head Island area. Okay, gotcha. And, and so what is like in that situation, like what's the depth of water that you're kind of going in there? Um, if, if the water temperature is not too hot, I like fishing shallow. Although, you know, your redfish in the summertime will feed shallow, uh, even if the water is 90 degrees. But um, I'm typically fishing less than five feet of water. Okay, so about five feet of water, and so mm-hmm. so you're in these creeks. You're, you're you're fishing about five feet of water, and and so are you are you finding like all three of these species? Like, can I can I catch like a, a flounder, a trout, a red drum, like all in the same area? Is that is that uh, in certain in certain areas you can actually, um, you know, certain places set up better for redfish, uh, flounder, or sea trout, um, you know, individually, but. Certain areas do produce uh, sea trout where redfish uh, reside, but I don't really catch many flounder up shallow early in the year, um, May and June. Usually, usually I'll catch flounder where my redfish are in July and August uh, up shallow, and it you know it makes sense because your bait fisher showed up or have showed up your mullet um, after July, typically the first week of July. Um, and your redfish are starting to school up, but uh, your sea trout tend to school up around um, June and July, but, but normally in deeper water. So uh, I won't I won't target those sea trout where I'm catching redfish and flounder if I'm in the creeks. But you know you just get lucky every now and then if uh, if you're not fishing like super shallow in pockets, uh, but maybe on like a point <clears throat> or like out in front of a creek mouth, uh, let's say, you know, some of the, some of the creeks around Buzzards Bay, um, you'll typically catch sea trout if the bank is deep enough. If like there's cool, clean water coming in with the rising tide. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, I'm going to jump over here to Facebook real quick. Cause we like to interact with our audience. Um, this one's a funny one. I take it. You probably know, uh, Quentin, uh, Holly, a friend of yours. <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> Perfect. I, I could tell by the, the question that he's asking. He says, where's the best place to go looking for citation toadfish? <laughs> uh, that would be anywhere in the ocean or in the river <laughs> on, on structure. All right. Is there any uh, secrets that you want to reveal about Quentin while we're on the show since he's trying to troll uh, you a little? Quentin's a good friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> he, you know, he grew up with my brother, but uh, he's actually – probably is tarpon fishing right now or, or attempting to catch tarpon um in the ocean uh, off the bald head but uh, no he's he's a good fisherman and he doesn't get out as much as he probably wants to but uh, when he does he usually catches them all right man for someone trolling you on the internet that was a pretty generous uh thing you had to say to him uh luke tippett wants to know what's in the cup <laughs> <laughs> you don't oh uh, it is iced water oh iced water all right perfect um let's see here philip stan said now this is a good question i mean those other two were okay but this one's this one's good it says do you find it more difficult locating redfish in lower cape fear versus wrightsville and topsail area um i don't i don't usually fish like north of wrightsville i mean i can I can catch redfish in Crown Beach, uh, you know, catch redfish around Wrightsville Beach. I don't know the topsail area that much. Um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time up there growing up, but mainly just, you know, Southport, Oak Island, and Bald Head. Uh, so I, I have a lot of confidence in fishing uh, that area uh, from, you know, Snow's Cut and south, uh, even towards, you know, Holden, Ocean Isle, and Little River. So, yeah, I, I, I have a lot more confidence finding redfish um, in kind of my home waters versus, you know, fishing up north where there's a lot of sandy bottom and, and clear shallow water with not, not as much tide. Okay. Well, man, that's, uh, that's, that's great. The great answer. And it le- leads right into my next question. Um, and I'm glad you said sandy bottom because this question just says, what kind of bottom do you like? That could go a lot of different ways, but glad you talking about sandy bottom versus what, what kind of bottom do you like? Well, honestly, I like uh, shell bottom, like, you know, typically like a sand and mud mix. Um, but, you know, these redfish, depending on the time of year, um, you, you catch them everywhere. But, you know, we're targeting rocks or, you know, 
oyster beds, uh, you know, structure, docks, um, you know, something along that line. But, um, you know, mud, you know, where there's crustaceans, crab, shrimp, um, and then, you know, bait fish. So, uh, but like I said, you know, fishing that lower end of the tide when it's falling, um, setting up on pockets or setting up in the pockets and fishing points uh, near Creek Mouse have, have, uh, have been my, my main producer, honestly. And then, you know, not everything, not everything you see that looks good produces fish. Uh, so you kind of have to, you, you kind of have to hop around, but, um, shell bottom oysters, uh, it's, it's difficult to fish. You know, Carolina rigging bait fish, uh, in shallow water along oyster rock. So, you know, I'll fish a lighter weight, um, and typically a jig head. So, um, that has, has produced, uh, for me more than anything else. Okay. Yeah. I was getting ready to ask you, what do you, what do you feel like is more productive? Do you feel like, uh, like docks and man-made structure or oyster beds is a more productive? So it sounds like the creeks, the, the creek mouse, the marsh, maybe that's where you're kind of setting up and, and really getting in that current and, and targeting those fish. Is that, that sound about right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Fishing, you know, Oyster beds, like so, like I, we were discussing before, you know, the show started. Um, you know, getting out, just just putting your time in, and, and you know, locating rocks that are exposed at low tide that that might necessarily not be exposed at high tide, and knowing where they are and fishing that fallen tide, so casting around them before they're exposed. I mean, typically those redfish will set up around them or at least cruise by them if they're coming out of the creek. Uh, or a feeder creek off of like a main creek. So, um, you know, just trying to hit rock to rock uh, on that falling tide. And, and, you know, depending on the moon phase, you don't have a lot of time to hit all your spots uh, if you're on a four-hour trip. So, uh, you know, fishing the spots that have produced in the last like 10, 15 years, kind of where I know redfish will stage up, I'll hit. And normally, normally the fish are there, but you know, a lot of times you can go out and hit your best stuff and, and not get bit. So it's uh, it's day to day for us. Okay. And, and so we kind of talked a little bit about, um, you know, where to fish, where you're looking to fish. So let's talk about presentation, like casting, you know, where, where am I putting bait when I'm at these spots? Um, so, so just for instance, like if you're fishing like a real, so if you're, you're set up, you're at one of these points and there's a real heavy current, kind of what is your go-to setup? And I, I know you, and probably speaking more, you know, live bait setup. I know that's what you said you, you fish most, especially when clients are on the boat. Uh, can you yep. tell us a little bit about your heavy current and then maybe even like talk about when there's no current or a little bit of current as well? Um, yeah. So like fishing points, uh, if, if, you know, we're fishing like in a main creek and, um, to say you got this, you know, Spartina point sticking out and, and you have a lot of current hitting that, uh, depending on where you're set up and it typically it creates an eddy behind that point and and I like to target eddies honestly um, if you can get out of the current uh, depending on the height of the tide and, and kind of where you're located at um, you can have a lot of a lot of success there um, but incoming cod fishing creeks um, fish are, are mainly in current so uh, in, including flounder as well as and, and trout. So, um, but just for targeting redfish, I like fishing, you know, the backs of the points uh, where the bait fish are kind of protected. Uh, typically, those fish will come out, go around the point, and then hunt in those eddies. Uh, so, that's been been a good little spot for me. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense to get in there. And that's like, you know, especially because, like I said, I'm, I'm from the mountains of Tennessee. So, you know, trout water, you know, trout fishing there. So so now let me ask you this. When you're fishing those eddies, because, you know, like when I'm fishing a trout stream, especially if I'm like fly fishing, um, you know, I'm kind of trying to bring that around the rock. I'm not, I don't know if I'm necessarily casting right into the to the dead zone, you know, the, to the like where the water's calm. So when you're bait fishing, are you like putting it, right there in where the calm water is or are you trying to, um, I, to explain a little bit of strategy there because i'm i'd be interested to to know like what you know how do i present it 
in a, in that eddy situation. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I you know typically a fishing no less than three people on our boat. Um, you know, I have clients that you know have a little bit of experience. So you know, casting can be uh, an issue, but you know, I typically tell people where to cast. If you can't cast, I'll put it in uh, or to where I think those fish should be at. But you know, hitting the point uh, or points where the current's uh, breaking, and then fishing from that point throughout that pocket uh, in the eddy, you know, fishing, you know, maybe three or four rods, five feet apart. i uh, just trying to locate those fish if, if they're in that pocket uh, or that eddy. Um, so just hitting that point and then the calm water behind it. But, you know, depending on the type of structure or bottom that's behind that point, fishing right on the edge of the grass or just a few feet off. Okay, gotcha. And, and when you're fishing that way, like, is there a particular particular bait that you're using? I mean, if, if I go out, say, and once again, not very experienced here at bait fishing, so if you had to give me some advice as a first-time fisherman, uh, what am I putting in my, what do I got in the cooler, or what do I got in the live well? I mean, do I need shrimp? Do I need, you know, mullet? Like, what am I looking to, to take with me to, to try? Is there different situations, times of day? Is it just match the hatch? What's the, what's the uh, ticket honestly, there? Honestly, you know, match the hatch, um, and you hear a lot of a lot of folks say that, and you know, for freshwater, saltwater, uh, wherever you may be fishing, but I mean, that's a, a you know a great uh, motto to stand by, and it's it's funny because you know, guy fishing, you know, May typically May and June, uh, we're primarily fishing with menhaden and and small menhaden, um, if if there's an abundance of those around. They're typically easier to catch, you know, if they're schooled up. But uh, and that's what those fish are exposed to early. Uh, your mullet won't start running until you know mid July, early July. Um, but it's funny because the last few years I've I've noticed this, and then talking to other guides uh, as well as wreck fishermen, there's a transition period when the fish stop eating menhaden and start eating mullet, and and that's typically when you when you start seeing those mullet run or just before the mullet run starts. Um, and so, you know, at low tide, you can get into the creeks uh, and cast net in the mud and, and you catch, you know, pinky size, finger size mullet uh, right before they start running. But, you know, you'll have days where the weather's perfect and the tide's perfect and you set up on these points and fish in these pockets and, you know, you see a little bit of bait fish, but, you know, where your redfish should be at or maybe even flounder or sea trout and they won't eat menhaid. And, then you have a friend who kills them on a mullet. So uh, that's something that we have to adapt to. And and typically, right when that switch happens, it's game on. So I mean, fishing mullet from here on out, you know, if you can get them. Uh, but at the same time, you know, shrimp do well, you know, they do really well depending on what you're targeting. Um, you know, sea trout in the, in the summertime, can be phenomenal, but that's it's something I target in the fall, uh, mainly. But uh, Menhaden from May into June, and then July and August, I'm I'm primarily fishing mullet. Okay, okay, awesome, man. And so when you're when you're rigging this up, are are you finding fish with like a Carolina rig? I mean, I know that's really popular around here. Uh, can you talk a little bit about you know different baits, different rigs, um, just you know, when you're fishing those areas and what, what you've seen works best. Yeah. So like I was, I had mentioned before, but you know, fishing shallow, uh, and creeks, if, if you're not in a lot of current and you're, you're targeting, you know, redfish or flounder on in these oyster beds or around oyster beds. Uh, I'll typically fish a Carolina rig with a lighter weight, maybe a half ounce, or if I can get a quarter ounce lead head or a quarter ounce jig, um, I'm sorry, uh, egg weight, to uh, the area that I'm, I'm targeting fish without getting too close, uh, that's what I'll do uh, if I'm fishing current, you know, ounce to ounce and a half, uh, typically uh, no more than that, uh, because you want your bait to kind of roll around a little bit um, at the same time, uh, you know, sit still. But um, fishing clear water, I like, I like using a little bit of leader. Um, when I'm fishing dirty water, I, I typically run 
Uh, and people might think I'm crazy, but 10 inches or less um, because <clears throat> you want your, you know, visibility is not good and your water clarity is, is awful. Uh, those fish are on the bottom. They're feeding on the bottom. Uh, flounder to lay on the bottom. So you want that bait fish to be as close to the bottom as possible uh, in order to get bit or for them fish to actually see the bait fish you're throwing. But, uh, you know, Carolina rig um, is go-to and then jig heads occasionally if, you know, clients can and can cast them and, and fish them properly. Okay, awesome. And, and so, I mean, that you know, that's what I always go out with too. I always always have a Carolina rig just trying to let the let the current push it around try to find a something sneaking around somewhere um and then I often just go back to my artificial because I'm too lazy to <laughs> to wait or keep it keep it maintenance properly um so let me ask you a question about your so we kind of talked about your bait setup your your rigging there um, is there like a go-to inshore rod that, that you're using? I mean, either for yourself, like personally, I know maybe your equipment for your, your customers may be a little different. Um, I find that most guides have a little better personal equipment and then, you know, stuff that can <laughs> cheaper to replace if it's snapping all over the place or whatever, you know, whatever people drop it. So can you talk a little bit yeah. about your fishing rod set up there? Yeah. Like, uh, like you had mentioned, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure Judson and, uh, you know, several other guys can, uh, attest to this, but you know, clients are hard on gear and, you know, we don't like to fish, you know, super nice equipment, um, with folks who, who go fishing once or twice a year, but yeah, you know, personal gear or equipment is, uh, is definitely a lot, a lot nicer, but, um, targeting, uh, reds and flounder, uh, you know, sea trout, if you're using like a medium heavy rod and, you know, you're live bait fishing, sea trout aren't that fun to catch uh, with a heavy rod. But, um, you know, medium heavy, like seven to seven and a half foot uh, or even a six and a half foot rod is uh, is our go to. Um, and then, you know, fishing 2500 series reels to 4000, you know, no greater than 4000 because we're not catching anything monstrous inshore but um and then 30 to 50 pound braid okay and what uh as far as your reel there is there a particular brand that you found that you like better than than another or um i don't have a preference honestly i think all real companies are uh you know uh, comparable um and i'm gonna just you know lay this out there while we're on the air but here we go uh you know we don't we don't, uh, I, I don't fish, uh, super nice gear, but, you know, pin battles, uh, Shimano, you know, Shimano Sedona's, um, I am liking the new, uh, the BG series die was, although I've had a few issues with the 3000 model. Um, and then I'm trying to think mainly just, you know, your lower end Shimano or your, your pin battles and your pin pierces. Okay. Gotcha. Well, I want to, I want to, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, and then, you know, I'm not fishing new reels. I'm, I'm usually buying some stuff off of eBay and, or repairing them myself. So I have a uh, miscellaneous bag of uh, used fishing reels. All right. Yeah, man. That's how I had a, I got a box in my garage just smacked full of uh, fishing reels. Some of them don't even turn. Like they're just so boogered, oh, yeah. boogered up. Uh, but man, I actually bought a BG um, 2500 gosh, maybe a year or two ago now, and I literally, I don't think I've ever washed that thing, and it still does wonders. I'm actually shocked every year when I pick it up. I'm like, how does this thing even work? Um, no, they're they're uh, they're probably my favorite, you know, light light tackle reel uh, to use. Um, you know, I think Judson or maybe even it was Ben uh, Chesney who introduced me to them, um, and I was curious, and, and my brother bought some big reels for offshore fishing, but uh, I absolutely love that 2500 uh, BG, and you know, for as far as catching trout and then uh, you know redfish on artificials and, and plugs and stuff, and you know, typically fishing like 10 eight eight to 10 12 15 pound braid with those reels, and just the tournament drag system that set up in that in that reel for the price is kind of unbeatable. Yeah, man, I think they're like a hundred bucks or something. I, I bought one. I, I think Ben actually sold the one the one I have to me and you know like I said I don't know any better so I went fishing with a buddy of mine 
with like a medium, like, I don't even know if, I guess it was like a medium weight rod with a BG, it was like a century rod, like a trout rod, and I took it Bonita fishing and, and foul hooked a Bonita, and dude, that thing, I was surprised that all three of us, the BG, the century, and myself made it through that fight, dude, it was crazy, and ever since then, I'm like, okay, if this thing can take that beating, then I'm gonna keep it and, and forever. And it's, dude, it's it's yeah. just been phenomenal. So, um, oh, they're they're great little reels, and they don't break the bank. So, yeah, man, oh, absolutely. Continue, I'll continue to fish them for sure. So, I'm gonna get into some Facebook questions. I I kind of pop in and out of these. Uh, somebody wants to know your best fishing spot. He'll he'll send that to you directly. He'll comment to you directly. Um, so let's talk about. I'm sure I have their I'm sure I have their contact information in my cell phone. Yeah, yeah, you probably yeah probably so. Um, so let's talk about a little bit sky conditions, and and we can get into weather conditions at this point as well. What, what do you think? I mean, is it is it like bass fishing? Is it like oh overcast and and evenings do better or or what have you had the most success with um there's really no rhyme or reason uh to the consistency and you know i have I mean, you know in the summer heat and the water temperature spike you know, we don't get a lot of rain and your um your evening temperatures you know nine ten o'clock at night are still in upper 80s low 90s um it can make it can make fishing difficult and uh, or the fish can be sluggish uh i guess you could say but um i like I don't really have a preference, honestly, Billy, um, as far as targeting, you know, redfish, I don't think they really care one way or the other flounder the same, but, you know, trout are, are finicky fish and, um, in the summer overcast is best. And, and, you know, I think even in, in the fall, but, um, you know, in the winter time, you really want that, that, that sun so that it warms the water up or warms the mud or the rocks or the, the wood or the particular structure you're fishing for those trout to turn on. But, um, here recently, I think it was like maybe a week and a half ago, uh, we had a cold front and it was, uh, we had a hard blow out of the Northwest and typically we don't get North winds in the summertime. So where, uh, I was catching most of my fish, the creeks were blown out, um, cause we had some rain b before and then, you know, that North wind right after. But, um, so I stayed in the river in Southport and, where you know we normally catch redfish and flounder, it's like a community spot. Um, we were pulling in trout every cast, and and I I think that that cooler morning, I think maybe the weather was like 73 degrees, which is very unusual in the summer. But um, with the overcast north wind and, and the cooler uh, the cooler weather, it, those trout were fired up. Oh man, yeah, I, I always love like a pretty good trout bite. Like I was. Um... I was doing, you know, kind of the same thing. Like, actually, it was like a colder cold snap came through, and a buddy of mine was like, hey, let's go fishing. And, dude, I didn't pull as many, but it was like he was just flinging these trout in the boat, like one right after the other, after the other, um, on like a little sinking, I guess it was like a little sinking plug or something like that. And, and man, so it did really well uh, with that as well. So let me, yeah. let me get to, I, I mean, I know you fish more, um, you know, particularly when you're with clients, if you fish more live bait, but somebody has a question about soft plastics. Uh, Ken is asking what size and type of leader do you prefer for soft plastics when targeting reds? Um, I, you know, I don't like to lose fish and, and I think most of the people that, uh, who are probably watching the show that I'm, I'm friends with, um, understand that or, or know me that I don't like losing fish. So, you know, Growing up, I was like, you know, fish light line, fish light leader, um, you know, just light tackle in general for the fun of it. And and now that I, I do this for a living, um, you know, numbers are, are what counts. And then having fish uh, to eat in the boat is, is the ultimate goal, especially for p paying clients. So um, I actually bump up my equipment. And even when I'm fun fishing, fishing 15-pound monofilament, if I'm throwing topwater lures or, you know, monofilament in general, fishing uh, surface plugs or any surface lure uh, for that matter, uh, no less than 15, and I'll fish up to 30, uh, even with fluorocarbon. And then as far as leader length, um, no less than two to three foot, depending on, uh, like, visibility. Okay. All right. So hopefully that answered uh, 
their question pretty good. Uh, and I'm just sorry, I'm just keep uh, rolling through here. Uh, somebody asked, what's your favorite tide and bait? I don't know. If, I, I know you talked a little bit about tides earlier, but um, maybe you could answer that question quickly for Bob. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I, oh you go ahead. I apologize, Billy. Really. Oh, no, you're good. I said Bob West was asking, what's your favorite tide and bait? Tide and bait. Um, it's a tough a tough question because I like you know I like fishing both sides of the tide and you know I pay attention to that and it, it's something that we you know fish by uh, you know depending on the height of the tide but but I had to go out and fish one tide it would probably be kind of like a two and a half three foot tide on the falling um, you know fishing fishing the points that uh, I was I had mentioned earlier and I was talking about uh, targeting redfish because that's you know, typically when they're coming out of the creeks, they're hungry or they're chasing bait. The bait's falling, and uh, and then catching them in those eddies behind those points up shallow. Okay, yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Um, I, I'm still reading some comments here. I don't mean to be so distracted by it, but I want to make sure I get all the questions answered. And by the way, if you guys are tuning in live, um, I am with. Uh, Travis Overman of Oak Island Fishing Charters. Uh, he's a guide here, local guy. Uh, so if you have any questions, we're talking about inshore fishing, primarily bait fishing. Uh, now's the time to ask. We are about nine minutes from bringing this show to an hour, and we are trying our best to stay at an hour or so. And unfortunately, my co-host Justin Brock is not with us tonight. And so uh, being yeah, we we miss you, Justin. Yeah, we miss you, man. And and hopefully, Travis, you know, through this, I've uh, protected your reputation and ask you some good questions and, uh, you know, try to be as conversational as possible. I mean, I'm the first to admit I have no pride when it comes to fishing because I'm, I'm like your best client. Like I, I'm the guy who, who, uh, you know, I was telling somebody this the other day, uh, I was like, you can take me fishing with you. I'll never remember where you took me. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I bought a boat and had a boat, I would never remember I'm directly challenged. So, um, uh, yeah. but man, I, I, I typically don't have many folks that, uh, that, that do, you know, bring like a handheld GPS. I honestly have never had anyone, uh, you know, like record the areas that we fish or like try to pull up a, like a, a satellite image or something like that. But no, um, like I said, most of the folks we're taking out are, you know, have little to no experience at all. So they're just, they're out, they're out to try to catch dinner for the week. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's a great way if you're coming here for vacation to, you know, instead of going dropping all kinds of money at the grocery store, like come have a good time on the water and, and fish with you. Uh, so Matt Dale asked this question. He says, gulp mullet or shrimp uh, with what size and color jig head? So a lot of artificial questions for you. So would you fish with a, okay. a gulp uh, mullet bait or a shrimp bait? you know which ones you which one do you prefer and what size and color jig heads if it matters I and have, if it doesn't matter I, tell us <laughs> uh yeah i think it does matter and you know i think fish see certain colors uh better than other um but you know typically you know quarter ounce uh jig head um even up to a half ounce but if i'm fishing shallow i like you know my bait not hanging up in the in the bottom as much so fishing quarter ounce or even an eight uh depending on the current uh, with a uh, red or chartreuse jig head and and typically in the summertime i like uh fishing the uh, white chartreuse gulp, gulp shrimp okay gotcha uh so f so first of all i scroll back through here and your mom is watching so she said hello <laughs> always like I always like to pull out everybody's mom and tell them hello. So cool. she's proud of you. Just wanted to let you know. I don't know if you're looking at the comments or not. Um, no, actually, I, I, I can only see you and uh, from our from my Skype page. I haven't seen anyone uh, online. I'm not even close to being on Facebook. So all <laughs> I have in front of me is my cell phone and, and, and the laptop. So Perfect. Okay, well, I think I'm catching most of them, so, so we're pretty good to go uh so daniel Ave, avant or avant i'm not sure how to pronounce his last name yeah. Yeah, um i you know he posted something right here which i found i found this out like uh, you know shortly after i moved here but he says i got the bananas i'm assuming he's referring to a superstition of you know banana boats and have a banana on a boat is that what he's talking about sure. you feel like <laughs> he uh, yeah he definitely is uh he's a jokester um but uh as far as bananas i have um, I 
have caught so many fish with bananas on on the boat. So I think it's just a bad excuse for uh, for those who don't catch fish when they do have bananas on the boat. Oh, okay. They, they easily blame it on the banana. So, so talking about superstitions, is there any superstition or like game day ritual uh, that you kind of practice? I mean, I know people got lucky socks and underwear and all this stuff. Like, you subscribe to any of that? I I do not honestly, Billy. Um, <laughs> You know the the one thing I uh, I worry about before I even go to bed or I get up in the morning if I'm you know fishing clients or uh, if I'm you know fishing in a tournament uh, for that matter is bait and where can I find it and how fast can I get it? Yeah, exactly. And and I assume you go out with cast net and you cast you know you're getting your own bait using the resource. Sure. Cool. Yep. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, so that brings me to my next question and we're kind of through the, the fishing thing. If anybody else has any more questions that are watching here in just a couple minutes, I'm going to give away, uh, an AFCO hat. Wait, yeah, no, 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 not an AFCO hat. I'm going to give away this from Judy Brock. I'm going to pick somebody random from the comments. I always get those two things confused. No big deal. Uh, yeah, they're giving away some, some nice gear that, uh, I don't think that I can participate in. Yeah, man. So, yeah, AFCO is, uh, man, they have hooked us up. They're just super, super great company and, and supporters of the show. And, and same with uh, Judson's mom. And she has painted all these, and they're just beautiful. Or um, And I guess that's paint. I probably should ask so I'm not promoting something that's not because I have no artistic bone in my body. Um, so if you have any more last-minute questions, guys, that are watching or listening, uh, be sure to ask those. And I'm going to ask this one question. Sure. I've been kind of curious, um, and I meant to ask this question of, of all our other guests, but I just haven't. Um, what is the craziest thing you've seen at the boat ramp? Craziest thing I've seen at the boat ramp? Um, well, uh, stupidity, uh, you know, no common sense. Um, I worked at a marina for five years, okay. so I think... Okay. I've seen more, you know, or I guess crazier things or incidents at, at that particular location, but at the boat ramp, you know, I try to stay away from public areas and, uh, I'm fortunate enough to have a slip at uh, South Park Marina in my home port. And, uh, although I'm near the ramp, I don't, you know, I don't really see too many shenanigans, uh, but maybe like a boat on the, on the concrete, you know, with the trailer nowhere in sight, uh, or, you know, a boat on the dock, that's not uncommon. Uh, or a truck in the water. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. Wrightsville Beach has had quite a few. So. Oh yeah, man. I, I was. Um, I don't know what holiday it was, but I saw someone post on Instagram that they were literally out there in their lawn chairs, just like taking pictures and video, and it was like their entertainment for. I think it was Memorial Day or Fourth of July, or maybe even both. Um, so I, I think boat ramps are are always fun. So yeah, if you guys. Oh, for sure. it, it's great entertainment and. You know, something that uh, my clients enjoy when I'm you know, when I'm back at the dock and I am cutting fish, uh, for sure, especially on holiday weekends. Oh man, no shortage of that. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Here's a, a question from Abby Moser. It said, "How many days did it take you to put your fiance on a flounder?" I, I saw that picture, by the way. So that's a good question. All right. So, uh, I, I knew that would probably uh, come on air, uh, but you know, we we don't get a whole lot of time. Uh, to spend on the water, uh, especially with me fishing, you know, two times a day, you know, 100, 120, 150 days a year. Um, but we, we try to take advantage of the few opportunities we get. But uh, her first legal flounder she caught uh, was two evenings ago. Oh, that's awesome, man. She has caught several short flounder. Uh, don't let her fool you or anyone. Um, but, yeah, her first legal, legal catch uh, all by herself was uh, two evenings ago. Okay, man, that's awesome. So I bet you guys cooked that thing up and had a good meal out of it. It's it's uh, waiting to be cooked. Okay. It's in the fridge. Yeah. Nice, man. Well, Travis, once again, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, it looks like that's most of the questions uh, that we had in the comments. You, you can feel free oh. after the episode, uh, you know, whenever you have some downtime and you're not running two or three trips a day <laughs> you can check it out and if you want to answer any questions uh directly you can feel free to do that so man really well, appreciate I'll, I'll definitely i will definitely do that and uh i honestly wish we had a little bit more time to chat um this is actually pretty fun and you know i could talk fishing for hours anybody that knows me 
knows that I am a I'm a talker and love and enjoy talking about fishing. Yeah, man. Well, you you've helped me out a lot. You made my job easy as far as asking questions and and providing good answers. So we'll definitely have to have you back on the show at some point, and and appreciate you being a part of the show. And so, man, I would if it, love to be back, man. And uh, it's an honor for uh, you guys to have me on the show. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Well, and a lot of people in the comments are saying, hey, you're one of the best guides in the Southport area. A lot of fans out there, so. Uh, I try. I try. Uh, I have great support, for sure. Yeah, man, that's awesome. It's good to have a community. That's what, you know, it's a part of uh, the reason why we launched this show was because we, you know, in particular, I really enjoy the fishing community, even though I'm not, like, the greatest angler out there or even get to fish that often. I just like the camaraderie and all those things. So, and having conversations like this, you know, I'm learning a lot and often I feel like I'm just watching someone's YouTube video and then I got to like snap out of it and go like, Oh wait, I got to ask the next question. So, yeah. So man, honestly thought like an hour, uh, an hour of uh, talking about fishing uh, would be, you know, a task, but you know, time flies and, you know, you can hit on so many points and, but you just have so so little time. So yeah, absolutely, man. And it's it's cool to see everybody's different perspectives and strategies and techniques. Um, so that's a lot of fun to to be able to to listen to those and different opinions. So man, take a couple minutes, or if you have, I mean, you don't have to take a couple minutes, but just take a next yeah. you know minute or so. If you have any closing thoughts or an encouragement for people who are you know either trying to learn how to fish, been fishing for a while, guide, you know, like whatever whatever you want to to share. You can, uh, just putting your time in, honestly, and, uh, you know, respecting the others uh, that are out there and have, have put their time in. Um, but, you know, I, I was uh, fortunate enough to get out in the water super early uh, at a young age, especially saltwater fishing. My, my friends uh, and their their fathers, my dad's friends, uh, they were out, able to carry me out when my dad wasn't. So, um, you know, fishing bald head in the summers when I was uh, pre-teens and um, early teens and uh, way before that. Um, so very, very fortunate to have uh, learned this area at, at such a young age. But like I said before, I mean, everything's changing. The marsh has changed. Uh, you know, some of the creeks have turned a different direction. Uh, you know, sandbars are in different locations and, you know, grass beds have suddenly formed where they weren't uh, 20 years ago. But, you know, you got to change with the, with the conditions daily. Um, so, you know, your fish are not, not always going to be where you caught them the day before. So it's one thing is just putting your time in, doing your homework, and uh, and enjoying it and learning. And, you know, you learn so much every day, at least I do, and I hope most of the folks that, that are out there uh, learn daily because it's part of it. If you don't learn, you're not, you're not you know. Yeah, yeah, man, that's sound advice you out there. You understand what the fish are doing, so. Yeah, man, that's, that is sound advice, Travis. I, I like it. I'm a fan of learning something new every day. Um, that was actually a motto of mine a couple of years ago. Um, a whole different subject, but playing guitar. I played guitar for several years, kind of got dormant, and then I, I made a goal for one year to learn something new every single day about playing music. So uh, great episode. Once again, thank you, for, thank you for being on. Oh, yeah, okay, well, there you go. So we have to do a, a different podcast, like a music podcast. We play little, play little tunes, teach some lessons. Um, sure thing. But yeah, man, appreciate you being on the show. I'm going to switch cameras to my camera and give away uh, this this image from Judy Brock. So this is the last chance, guys, and you have to comment on the show. So if you just say hi to us, uh, I'm going to randomly scroll through and choose somebody here in just a second. We're going to give that away. So, Travis, uh, you can hang out, and I'll be right back with you after the show. But appreciate you being on. Man, thank you for everything. Hey, thank you, Billy, and thank you for everyone uh, tuning in this, uh, this week. Absolutely. Go follow Travis. It's uh, Let me just pull up his camera real quick here. It is at T-R-A-V-V-V. Hit him up, uh, you know, take him like take him out fishing have him take you out fishing and <laughs> and show you the ropes i see that um you know you're working with people and and maybe even mentoring a couple people maybe from your facebook posts so um sure. yeah man so awesome job thank you so much you guys go follow him support him and uh, we'll talk to you soon travis all right thank you so much billy thank you all right guys so now is the fun part of the show uh, when we give this away and I'm going to scroll through while I hold this in front of my face so I can't even see what I'm doing, and I'm just going to land on one. And the winner is Richie Smith. 
So, Richie, appreciate you watching the show. Uh, he says uh, on his comment, good job, Travis, one of the best inshore captains around our area. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out our podcast. I'm going to try to upload that either tonight or early in the morning so you can listen to it. Uh, one of the biggest ways you can help us with our podcast is if you get on iTunes and rate it or Stitcher or TuneIn Radio or Podbean or, or, or whichever service that you listen to. Um, I think it's on Spotify. I'm having a little trouble with that one. Uh, but get on there and rate it. Check out our YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to like and share. Uh, this video as well. Um, all those things help us out, help us grow, and really keep us motivated um, to, to just work hard and be more diligent every single show to bring you guys value. So once again, appreciate you watching. This is episode six of Eastern Current, uh, finishing up here with Travis Overman, and we'll see you guys next time, next week. And next week, we're actually going to be with Elias Vosberg. So Elias V Fishing, you can check him out on YouTube. Uh, just a massive YouTube following. And so he's going to show us some offshore kayaking and, and you know, just kayaking uh, in general, kayak fishing. So it's going to be a really good episode. So tune in next week, 8 p.m. on Facebook Live, and we'll see you guys then. Have a great night.